The Twin Cities of Minnesota, the hub of the land of 10,000 crystal clear, beautiful lakes, the place that's so nice, its people are referred to as Minnesota nice, the home of Prince, tater tot hot dishes, and the original Juicy Lucy. But is it all sunshine and rainbows? Today we are going to talk about the 10 reasons people regret moving here, and our video starts now. Hello, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jake Labine, I'm a realtor here in the Twin Cities of Minnesota, and I absolutely love helping people like you make the transition here here to the Twin Cities. So rather you're make, looking to make a move in the next six days or 60 days or six months, give us a call, shoot us a text, shoot us an email. We absolutely love hearing from you as well. I referenced it in the video, but the first reason why people regret moving here to the Twin Cities of Minnesota is Minnesota nice. So what exactly is Minnesota nice? Well, it's kind of this deep seated impulsion to like keep up pleasant appearances and courteous conversation. You'll find some of the genuinely nicest people you will ever meet here in the Twin Cities. What you'll also find, though, is an unwillingness to have difficult conversations, a challenge to deal with any type of uh, confrontation, and almost an unwillingness to develop relationships late in life with friends uh, that they haven't known previously or have any true vulnerability of, uh, of that person. So the benefit is obviously you get a lot of really pleasant experiences with people. The negative is a lot of them are very superficial surface level um, interactions. It's, it's challenging for people to make friends once they relocate here. You know, I really encourage everyone that does come here, do what they can to ingratiate themselves in their community, do what they can to get involved with their interests, with their sports. That's the best way to do it. And eventually you'll get invited in and develop relationships, but it's not as seamless or easy in some of these like relocation heavy markets um, out West. The second reason people regret moving to the Twin Cities is just taxes, sheer amount of taxes too. If you were to look at a state map and really look at per individual what your marginal tax rate is when you factor in everything, what you'll find typically is the coasts are the most expensive, California, New York, maybe Oregon, Massachusetts, things like that. And then you'll find the rest of the country is pretty even with a very low marginal tax rate around four or five percent. Minnesota is like up there with the coast. It's at just under about 10 percent or so as of 2023 through the taxfoundation.org. And it's certainly one of the higher and it's much higher than its surrounding states too. Like North Dakota is a sub three percent. I was six. Um, Wisconsin seven six five. So it's one thing definitely to prepare yourself for. Cost of living calculators are really important and we'll get over cost of living a little bit more. But just the sheer amount of taxes that you face here are tough too. And you get taxed in a variety of different ways. We obviously have a sales tax on everything. We have a sales tax of 6.875%. But when you get closer to the cities, as well as like Hennepin and Ramsey County, we have county taxes. And then um, like the city taxes as well, make it a little bit higher that it can be as much as 8.375% percent on all purchases, which is tough. Property taxes are right around 1% of property value. You know, the good thing about Minnesota is we have lower lower housing prices than a lot of parts throughout the country, and we don't have nearly as like high of a property tax scale as other states. Like I know if you look in Nebraska, they're close to like 3% of property value, which really makes it tough to have that asset grow over time. Um, luckily, ours is pretty reasonable. And then we also have just a modestly high um, income tax and corporate tax rates too. So something to certainly pay attention to. What I can say about the taxes here is um, there certainly does feel like there's an investment into public good. I've talked a lot on this channel about the investment in parks, recreation, schools, um, pretty much everything you can see. Minnesota's got a really good job of taking advantage of it, but it's important to factor in that that comes with an expense and the expense is usually uh, taxpayer dollars. The third reason people regret moving to the Twin Cities is harsh winters. I've said it a million times. I think everyone's heard it a million times. When you think of Minnesota, you should be thinking about snow and cold. It's tough. It's very hard. And when I get on these consultation calls with a lot of people relocating here, I think sometimes they're not fully aware of how hard it was. I mean, we just had um, Halloween like two weeks ago and we already had snow on the ground for it. Now it's melted and it's a little bit better now. Um, but you'll routinely find periods of time where we will get sub zero degree temperatures, and that's uh Fahrenheit throughout the course of the winter. It's an intense cold and it's a different cold than most of the rest of the country. One small benefit is we don't get a ton of snow because it gets so cold. Like you'll find in some like waterfront States, like Oceanside States up in the Northeast or like some mountainous areas where you get that like snow coverage. Um, it's a lot different here for that. We'll get some big snow and last year we had a ton of snow, but it's typically more the cold 
in the freezing conditions than it is the snow itself. Now, there are ways to work around that. There are ways to warm yourself up. A lot of people have uh, auto start in their cars, so their car can heat up prior. I mean, it takes a lot to cancel school because we get so much ice and snow. Roads get plowed pretty well for the most part, certainly compared to a lot of other states I've been to. And then a lot of people will find an outdoor activity to do that time of the year. I never have found one. I don't like doing it. I'm not a big skier or snowboarder. Snowmobiling has always seemed too big. Um, ice fishing is really popular up north. Um, that's not for me. I'm not patient enough to do that. Um, but if you are, that's great. What I would suggest you do if you're, if you're willing to make the most of it is either plan some travel in those months. That's what I do. Or find an outdoor activity that you can do in the winter so you can get a little more excited about, you know, the three to six month freeze. The fourth reason why people regret moving here to the Twin Cities of Minnesota, you know, frankly, the homelessness and crime. Now, I am a firm believer that when it comes to crime here, like Minnesota is not, the Twin Cities is not dramatically different than any other major city, and it's typically a lot better than them. I think a lot likes to get reported on, frankly, because I, I think um, it's a sensationalist headline that strikes fear in some consumers and creates clicks. Now, that being said, there's undeniably an issue with both crime and homelessness here in the Twin Cities. Minneapolis specifically has like laid out um, a city response recently to the homelessness. We'll link that in the video description below of how to handle it. But there are different parts throughout the city where you will find some like encampments of homelessness. It's super sad. It's really sad. You know, this time of the year as we get closer to winter and you're expecting some deep freezes. I mean, it's unfortunately just, just the reality. If you have a good solution to, to how to deal with this, let me know. Obviously someone that works in helping people put people into housing. This is like really near and dear to my heart and something I've, I really feel for um, the importance of just having a home, having a place, a home base, a place to call home and a place to be safe from the elements. Um, but it's certainly been a challenge. You know, in regards to crime, it's definitely something that exists here. I think a lot of people have seen some reports, particularly following some of the George Floyd incidents of crime being on the uptick in, in the Twin Cities. I don't know if those are fully true. Um, last I checked in 2022, we saw a crime reduction of nearly 20%. I think a lot of this is sensationalized by people outside of the Twin Cities in order to drive clicks to all their media and social and um, engagement and pages and really um, nefariously cause some fear mongering. But that's just been my experience. Uh, there are plenty of safe places to live in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul, specifically if you want um, – any advice on any of those, there are plenty of websites that will show you like what the crime stats look like neighborhood to neighborhood and changes so much. And feel free to give me a call too if you have any questions. The fifth reason I see people regret moving to the Twin Cities, Minnesota, is the divided political climate here too. I'm a firm believer that America isn't as divided as it seems by party lines. It's far more divided by city or rural. And what you see in the Twin Cities, we see in Minnesota specifically, if you look at a election map, is you see the Twin Cities is a heavy, heavy blue area and then pretty much everywhere else where there is not dense population you see is like a very red conservative rural area in a way i don't think we're as divided as we seem i think people near each other are actually on the same pages i think we have a lot of different life experiences though based off of the population we have around here too so one thing that is a challenge though is there's not a lot of spaces besides like a few suburb communities where there's a lot of difference of opinion in minnesota you get a lot of people thinking the same thing, a lot of people having the same beliefs, um, which I think honestly leads to just a little bit more divided climate in general. So I think it's a problem throughout the throughout the country. Here in Minnesota, where we only have one really densely populated area in the Twin Cities and everything else is pretty rural, uh, I think it's felt a little bit more than some other states. The sixth reason people regret moving to the Twin Cities of Minnesota is just the nasty nasty traffic congestion. Minneapolis and St. Paul were two cities that were built over a hundred years ago. And they have obviously a big, a big river, the Mississippi river running right in between them as well. It leads to only being able to expand in certain areas. And what you find is the most densely populated areas and the most congested areas are closer to the water. This makes it super, super tough to build bridges to deal with uh, congestion going from one side of the river to the other it makes it super difficult to expand existing freeways and highways with its growing population in order to make it happen. And overall, it's created a, a situation where when you get towards rush hour traffic near the city or at near any of the freeways, like it's really bumper to bumper and it can be a grind. There's certain like congestion parts of the Metro that everyone knows, you know, I might have to add 15 minutes if I'm leaving between four and six or leaving in the morning just to get there because I have to take that exit. So it's something to certainly consider. Um, it's a frustrating type of traffic in the way that other cities aren't for whatever reason. Um, 
very stop and go, but, and there's really not a ton that's going to be able to be done about it because of some of the constraints with the way that the city was built and the, the location the city was. In addition to that, it feels like when the roads are running smoothly because of the intense seasons, the intense cold, ice, snow, as well as the um, heavy, hot sun in the summer, there's not a lot of end in sight. There's tons of road construction that happens during those times of the year. And it's just a never ending battle here for locals. So that's definitely one thing that people are surprised about because it is a more spread out city than some others. And that kind of leads us to our next point, which is um, number seven, and that's the air quality in the summer months here in the Twin Cities. Now, this is something that was never an issue for me growing up. We never had really bad you know, smog days or, or really bad air quality days. But what's happened a lot here too is we've got north of uh, Minnesota, we've got these Canadian wildfires that are happening almost every year because of just general droughts and dryness. And they burn and burn and burn. It, it almost seems like part of, you know, someone can correct me in the comments, but part of the what they have to do because they're so dense, uh, scarcely populated is just kind of let them burn out and control the flame. Well, by doing that, what ends up happening is that Northwest wind brings a lot of that smoke here into the twin cities and you'll, you'll have days where air quality is the AQI is like at 250, 300, um, where you can't see, you know, 50 yards in front of you as you're driving and everything slowed down here. Now it's not super common. It only happens for like one or two weeks, but um, it is a problem in sports outside will have to be canceled because of air quality issues. Again, something that is very new. I noticed it probably seven years ago when I was living up North in Minnesota, that this was starting to become a thing. You'd see the smoky haze and you, you know, the sun wouldn't be clear on a clear sunny day. Um, and it's getting closer and closer to the Metro every year now too. And I, I really think this might just kind of be a new normal with some of, um, the, the intensities of those, uh, forest fires and what's being caused by global warming. So something to definitely consider is despite how beautiful all the summer months are here in the twin cities, like we've got some air quality issues that we've never had before. Number eight. So this one's a little different because I've talked a lot about how strong the schools are in the state of Minnesota, and they typically are in terms of a national scale. One thing that I have noticed just looking at the Twin Cities and understanding the school districts at a more granular level is there is a large degree of how good a school at a school district is based on location. It's something really important to consider. It's not just super consistent that you drop your kid into any school, public school in the Twin Cities, they're going to have a great experience. What you'll find on websites like niche.com is they'll range from, you know, A plus range on the west side in Minnetonka and Wyzetta to, you know, C minus for certain parts of St. Paul and Minneapolis. So it's something super important if you have kids that are going to be going to school is to have an understanding of the areas that you're going to be living and what the school district's going to be for that, for that kid to give them the best chance possible. And that ties into number, what are we on? Number nine? Number nine, which is a lack of affordability in higher desirable areas too. Everyone knows school districts directly affect the value of a home for sure. What you'll find as well here too is to find maybe even a basic starter level home in an A plus school district, you have to go beyond 500,000 a lot of the times. Um, and that's just not doable for a lot of parents that need um, doable for a lot of parents. And that puts them in an awkward position where it's okay, do we go to a different area get a better house and a better quality of living experience and potentially sacrifice our child's education? Do we look for certain areas where we can open and roll and maybe make a small commute to get our kids to the places that we want to be, but still have an affordable life outside of that? Um, it's tough. It's, it's, you know, if you're moving here with kids, this is, these are definitely conversations you're going to want to have with someone that lives here in the area and understands this at a little bit more granular level so that you can make the best decision possible for your family. And then finally, number 10 reason why people regret moving here to the Twin Cities is a higher cost of living than they were anticipating. So I would encourage you to play around with like payscale.com's cost of living calculator, see where you're moving from to where you're moving to, but then understand too that, um, it might not just be Minnesota that you put. You might have to put like Minnetonka if you're going to live in an area like that where then the cost of living jumps up as well. Um, and another thing to consider is even if groceries, utilities, transportation are all, you know, and housing are all roughly the same compared to where you are, compared to where you are coming to, 
Um, and even if housing is generally the same, a lot of the times right now with where interest rates are, housing is becoming a lot less affordable because of just how expensive because of how expensive it is to get a mortgage right now with interest rates where they are too. So it's something really important to play around with. Get an understanding of what your income's going to be. Get an understanding of what your income's going to be post tax here, knowing that it's probably going to be less unless you're moving from one of the coasts. Um, and then really mess around with some of these calculators to get a true sense of what it's going to look like. And if you're moving here um, and you're really questioning it, ask to see some utility bills from people. Ask to, you know, drive by gas station, see how much gas is going to cost. Maybe walk into a few grocery stores, see how it compares. Um, these things are important. And the last thing I want people to do is to get themselves in an unaffordable situation, move into a really great area because of it too. So that's the list of the top 10 reasons. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We appreciate you as always.